Welcome to Living Hope Podcasts with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join me for another adventure in Exploring the Gospels. Our topic today is The Surprise. When Matthew wrote his gospel, he could never have imagined hearing the story I'm going to share with you today. John was born into a traditional Muslim family in Yemen. As soon as he was old enough to go to school, his Quranic studies began. Like all boys of his age, he was expected to memorize the Quran, pray five times a day, and go to the mosque every Friday. John knew that one day his parents would arrange a marriage for him. That day came much sooner than he expected. When he turned 13, he was engaged to his first cousin, who was five years older than he was. She was 18 at the time. As soon as John completed his high school education, they were married. In time, they had two daughters, and their family continued on. He moved from high school on into university. As his university studies progressed, John began to have questions about Islam. He did not dare share any of his doubts with his friends, and yet they kept growing within him. One day, John's dad surprised his mother with a trip to Mecca for the holy pilgrimage. That meant the whole family would go. John was delighted because he thought for sure his questions about Islam would be answered when he came to Mecca. John traveled with great expectation, but he soon discovered that Mecca was not what he hoped it would be. As he walked around the great Kaaba stone with thousands of people, he did not feel any closer to the presence of God. In his own words, this is what John said, I left Mecca feeling if there is a creator, this is not from him, this is man-made. What a shocking statement. He decided he could no longer follow Islam, and yet he knew he could not tell anyone about his decision. He knew he would be rejected by his family and certainly face the death penalty, the country where he lived. John described those days as some of the most difficult days of his life. He did all the things that were expected of him to do, and yet none of those things brought him any nearer to God. After three years, John felt like he just couldn't continue any longer. It was too difficult for him. He managed to get a flight from Yemen to Iran. From Iran, he escaped to Turkey. In Turkey, he found a way to join a refugee caravan and get on a small boat. And so it was, he set out to sea and arrived at Samothrace. This is a very common passage for people to take. Pastor Margaret and I have ministered to many Iranians in Athens who did exactly that journey as I have described it. After finally making it to Greece, he became friends with a man from Syria. He noticed that his friend had a tattoo on the inside of his arm. It was a cross. John asked him what it meant. Friend said it represents the cross of Jesus. He asked him if he'd like to know more about Jesus. Right away, John said yes. He invited John to the service that weekend in Greece. The moment John entered the church, he felt something he had never felt before. He saw men and women filled with joy, worshiping God. Although it seemed strange to him, his immediate experience was, I want what they have. He said to himself, there must be some secret power in that place. We know that power, of course, to be the power of the Holy Spirit. I've worshipped in many churches like that across Europe, Turkey. When people find Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit, worship is explosive. What a powerful atmosphere to be in. I love going in places like that. There are no limits to anything when we enjoy the presence of God. After the service, the pastor greeted John warmly and gave him a New Testament in Arabic. He had never seen a New Testament, never touched a New Testament, had no idea the content of what was in a New Testament. 
That night, John began reading the Gospel of Matthew for the first time. He could not put it down. Chapter 1, chapter 2, all the stories of Jesus. Chapter 3, the baptism, and 4, the temptations. The Sermon on the Mount just gripped his heart. He read every word. What a beautiful thing. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. What kind of thinking is that? Forgive and you will be forgiven. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Do not be anxious for tomorrow. What kind of liberation is that? He read Matthew from beginning to end. He wanted more. John felt so inspired to read more and more of the teachings of Jesus. Well, the pastor gave him a complete copy of the Bible. He read the Bible from cover to cover. In his own words, this is what John said, Bible answered all of my questions about prayer and fasting and identity. This is such an important understanding. We have an identity that's rooted in the fact that we have a God who loves us. This is the God I want to follow. This is the one I want to give my life for, John wrote. Yes, something started to change in my heart, he wrote. It was the most beautiful teaching I ever heard. For those of us who've been in church all of our life, isn't that a breath of fresh air? To hear an outsider say what reading the words of the Bible and the powerful impact that they had on his life. One year later, John was baptized. As a follower of Jesus, John began to search social media to find other Yemeni people who may be following Jesus. He discovered there are not many Yemeni believers speaking about Jesus on social media. One can understand why, especially in country. God put a passion in his heart to begin to share messages with his fellow countrymen in his Yemeni dialect. Today, John lives in another European country and regularly broadcasts positive messages about Jesus. It didn't take long for his family to discover his YouTube channel and his videos. They were certainly upset about their son and rejected him. Of course, if they didn't, the family themselves would have been killed. That's a very difficult thing to experience. John can't go back to Yemen. He can't see his family or his wife and children. He hopes that one day they'll become followers of Jesus and they will be all reunited in the grace and will of God. But that's not the end of the story. About three years ago, a young man from Yemen wrote to me after listening to one of our messages. For many days, we messaged intensely back and forth. He goes by the name of David. I'll call him that. It was during those days I learned how to respond to people who say, God can't have a son. People say that to me all the time. I said to David, you cannot understand who Jesus is with human thinking. It's going to take more than that. Only the Spirit of God is able to reveal that to you. I can answer your question, but I can't give you understanding. Ask God to show you who Jesus is. The Spirit of God answered David's question, revealed to him the true identity of Jesus. One day I asked David, would you like to be baptized? He said, oh, I'd love to be baptized. Of course, he'd read about the baptism of Jesus. He knew we were to make disciples and to go into all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, well, how can I do that? How, how can it be possible? I said to David, well, how far do you live from the Sea of Aden? He said, oh, my house is not that far. I said to him, tonight as the sun sets, just go down to the beach, and wade out into the water, completely immerse yourself under the water. Come back up out of the water, back up on the beach and call me on your cell phone. Tell me what you experienced. So David baptized himself. Isn't that beautiful? In his own country with no other believers around, nobody else there to witness what he did, except the angels in heaven and the Spirit of God himself. David was thrilled. Afterwards, this is what he confided in me. I've always been afraid to go to the sea. I don't go to the sea. When I went in last night, he said, I felt no fear. The presence of God was with me. Since then, David has been sending me pictures of young men who have decided to follow Jesus. They too want to be baptized. 
whether or not at the coast or inland and in some of the interior desert regions of Yemen, they take a bottle of drinking water and pour it over a person's head. What a beautiful sign. I've seen recorded videos of men making their testimony in Arabic, coming to Jesus and placing their faith in him. But David still writes to me regularly. We've written several times this week. After I discovered the story of John, I immediately thought of David. I sent him one of John's YouTube messages for him to listen to. David wrote back, my dear father, <laughs> isn't that sweet? John is a powerful young man. I listen to him all of the time. Isn't that beautiful? Both David and John are under threat from their families. Both of them love the gospel of Matthew. They're holding tightly to the words of Jesus. Well, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. When John was younger, his identity was in the cultural traditions in Yemen, clothing, and especially the expensive golden daggers that the men wear. These golden daggers and associated jewelry cost anywhere between $10,000 and $50,000. Scripture comes to life when you say, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? John's new identity is knowing who Jesus is and Jesus knowing who he is and living in a close relationship with him. John said, I belong to the King of heaven. I know that even if I die today or tomorrow, I know where I am going. It can kill my body but I will have eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? John and David live by these words. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 25. Both John and David have friends who have been martyred for Christ. While they grieve the loss of their friends, they know that they will see them in heaven again. John invites you to read Matthew for yourself and come to the same conclusions that he has come to. Only Jesus can forgive sins. Only Jesus can promise you a place in heaven. John invites us today to receive Jesus as our Savior. John traveled to three countries to search for the truth. God used the tattoo of a cross on the arm of a Syrian believer to touch his heart. John wants you to share your faith. You never know who's open to hearing about Jesus until you boldly ask the question, would you like to know more about Jesus? May God give you courage to share your faith with people that you meet. This is exactly what Jesus meant when he said, go and make disciples of all the nations. Clearer translation of that word go would be to say, as you are going, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey and the encounter that we have with people every day of our lives. Last week, someone gave their heart to Jesus from our team who was out in the streets of Norfolk talking to people about faith. It's a beautiful moment when people give their heart to Jesus and receive him as their savior. Today's story reminds us of the power of the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Matthew. Always be ready to give away a copy of the Gospel of Matthew. Every day people ask me online for a copy of the Bible. I send them a link to this website, www.bible.is. Such an easy site to reach. You can download the Bible there in 1600 languages. Aren't you so glad? No other book in the world has been translated into 1600 languages. Just a remarkable book. Matthew is a remarkable statement. As soon as I send people a link to the Bible, I immediately follow up that link with these words from the gospel of Matthew. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. 
those words warm your heart, something inside of you says, yes, I have a burden I'd like to have off of my shoulders. That means the Spirit of God is drawing you to give him your burdens that he wants to carry for you. If you do not have a copy of Matthew's Gospel, write to me, and I'll send you a digital copy of this amazing eyewitness account of the life of Jesus. I pray that John's testimony will encourage you to believe that you can have a relationship with God. All of the Gospels tell the good news that God wants you to have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Ask God to open your eyes to see who Jesus is, just like he opened the eyes of John and David. First, Jesus asked the question, who do people say that I am? People gave one answer and another, but it always comes down to the personal experience. He personalized it by asking, who do you say that I am? Jesus wants you to have a personal encounter with him. I believe there are people listening to this message who are ready to have a personal encounter with Jesus. That's you. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross to pay for my sins and for inviting me to have a close relationship with you. If you receive Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we'll send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear all of this sermon or more uplifting messages, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.